Hi, this is Shadi, and whenever there's a technique being banned, everyone complains and everyone starts to ask questions, and it's very logical, and we don't want the art to be compromised uh, for the sake of showmanship or something that's not related to safety. However, sometimes these decisions can be logical or can have some merit to them. For example, the recent uh, reverse serenage, uh, I asked the question why, at least tell us why, and uh, the IJF does not provide any reasoning, and in my opinion, they should because you're dealing with adults. But Dr. Roddy Ferguson actually contacted me and gave me a very detailed uh, description as to why it is um, banned. And today we're going to look at brain injuries and how one technique can differ from one judoka to another and an injury can happen for so many reasons. For example, here the lady was actually trying to avoid the ippon and thus she landed on her head. Now, let me show you uh, two examples of the same technique and how one is done very safely while the other is completely destructive. Here you see Inoue Kose doing what is called a Uchimata Makikomi where you let go of the lapel and you wrap them around you. He posts his forearm and there he proceeds to actually sacrifice himself for the score against Van Der Gies. While here, this is the same technique. Look at the elbow, how it lands directly on the head. This is how you get cauliflower ears and this is how you can cuss someone. And this is a ground and pound with Uchimata all in one. And of course, this is very dangerous and it should not be done. While Inoue Kose on the Olympic stage still managed to do it safely. So again, it differs from person to person. And uh, sometimes it's not even the thrower's fault. Like for example here, sometimes I would say there's the mat and how the, comp the sports complex is actually equipped. Sometimes there's springs underneath. You feel like you're on a trampoline like in Kodokan and in the... Paris center while sometimes they use these puzzle mats and there's nothing underneath and it can cause a lot of damage even if the throw is done very well here in my opinion it should not be banned uh, let me give you another example here this is just a simple case of Yoko Otoshi and the guy was dropped on his head and concussed or knocked out Yoko Otoshi is one of the safest techniques you can do even as a sutemi so uh, sometimes it's the mat's fault and the equipment. If the complex is not fully well equipped for safety, it should not host any competitions in my opinion. You should feel like you're on a trampoline, especially uh, when you're doing judo. This is Yoko Otoshi. Again, it can be done very safely. Now, when they're trying to avoid the Ippon and land on your torso, yes, a lot can go wrong, but it's not the guy who's doing the takedown's fault and it should be done on very well equipped mats. Here is another example, someone's trying to avoid the upon landing on their head. If there's springs underneath, I would say it would absorb a lot of the impact. I fell on my head uh, on very well equipped mats and fortunately nothing happened. Now, landing, controlling the landing is very crucial and it should be studied from throw to throw. Like here, for example, uh, Sode Tsuri Komigoshi in and of itself is not there's nothing wrong with it, but here he has his thumbs in. And this idea that I will do anything for the Ippon, including having this landing, in my opinion, it should be given a Hanso Kumake. Every throw should be studied depending on the landing. Anyone who says judo is a sport or watered down, please stop leaving this comment in my comment section. I beg you. And this one here, the one arm sode at the Budapest is a very recent example. There's zero control. The first thing that they teach you when you're learning judo, when you're throwing, is to control someone and they tell you they are your responsibility. And I don't care how high the level is, you should control your landing. You might fall with them, sure, but the landing should be controlled. And personally, and I hate to break this to you, but I predict one arm sode is the next technique to go. There's just little control to it. You can break the arm you are holding even before you throw. They can land on their head. They can post their arm. They can break the other arm. They could, so much can go wrong because there's little control. And I'm sure that when the IJF saw that Hifumi Abe one arm saw the in Budapest, they saw it with raised eyebrows. I, I highly predict that it's going to be the next to go. Uh, unless you want to do it safely, it can be done in my opinion. With the leg grab, the leg grab it uh, provides far more control. But 
again, when it comes to these throws, they should be inspected. You can do an Uchimata and destroy someone. You can do it very safely and land on top of them. Here, for example, it should be studied. Like this idea that I'm a champion, I'll do anything, or these people that are on open mats and like high-level competitors or national competitors, they end up just hurting you and bullying you into the uh, Ippon. And even if they see you struggling after getting up, and they keep that poker face as if like they're these badass people and uh, they don't even ask hey are you okay like screw you dude like you're not special just because you have a competition coming up and nobody should get hurt for you to get a medal in my opinion and controlling the landing is the first thing that it should be taught so every throw or every ippon uh, it should be reviewed on the camera again uh, like that hifumi abe and it should be given a Hanso Kumake because it will do two things. First of all, it will teach people that, hey, control your landing. And two, when you train and even when you fall with them and control your landing, it's going to create a far better Ippon and a clearer Ippon and safe Ippon. The goal is to go back safe and as far, and create a very good and effective Judo as possible. It's not just to win. It's not, oh, I'm being soft. No. Like, look at Pulyaev's head, how it was pile-drived into the mat. If this was poorly equipped, uh, the guy would have been uh, either dead or uh, completely paralyzed from neck down. So no one should sacrifice their health for you to become a champion. And every Ippon, especially those like horrific landing, should be studied each case by case and see whether if it's someone trying to avoid the Ippon and thus ended up hurting themselves, then it's on them. Or... You are like Hifumi Abe, just carelessly throwing someone and uh, possibly injuring them because Hifumi Abe, uh, as a monster of a champion as he is, I'm, I'm really worried that someday he's going to end up hurting someone and that's not the goal. So it can happen with your jujitsu, like a, a very controlled armbar or a flying reckless armbar, you can end up hurting yourself. This is the reason why a flying armbar was banned, is because to protect you and not the guy receiving the armbar. Like if someone is going for a flying triangle, I can just drop like a power bomb as they are flying for that triangle and they can end up hurting and not me. So the point of this video is the following. Control your landing because that's the first thing they teach you when you're a white belt, even at the highest level. Two, uh, a sports complex should be far more better equipped and in my opinion those puzzle mats should be stopped manufactured in my opinion and three uh, let's not ban more throws just study each throw in and of itself uh, we have these um, cameras now where they can review it if the landing is completely reckless and very ill controlled or badly controlled then it's on the guy that's doing the throw because when you throw they're your responsibility and please take care of each other um, if you have a competition coming up it doesn't mean that you get to hurt someone and bully them into an ippon or crank that armbar or whatever uh, competition you happen to have so um, as you saw even on wrestling mats uh, you can get hurt and concussed like that guy attempting a flying armbar so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below Please take care of each other. This is the main message. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.